So, a lot's happened in the world of Shovel Knight since we last visited it. Let's start with Shovel Knight Treasure Trove, a recent update to the game. Those who already own Shovel Knight on any platform have nothing to worry about regarding this update. Those who don't, well, you'll now have to pay $25 for the game, $10 over the release price. I don't think that's unfair, Shovel Knight is well worth $25 to me, but just be aware of that. This update exists, according to Yacht Club at least, in order to increase awareness of the other two campaigns within Shovel Knight, Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment, which will all be released as separate campaigns, each for $10, though at the time of this video, only Spectre of Torment has been released separately. Treasure Trove, however, includes the original game, now labeled Shovel of Hope, Plague of Shadows, Spectre of Torment, and will include the upcoming King Knight campaign whenever that's released. The current version of Shovel Knight also includes a few extras. Uh, first up is the Body Swap mode. In short, this mode allows you to swap either the body of any main character between male or female, and the pronouns used to refer to them in the same way. What's cool is that you can actually change these independently. If you want to have the Queen Knight sprite referred to as King Knight, go right ahead. Uh, some characters are left out of this though, most notably the four Kickstarter backer created characters. Uh, but this is probably done because they were backer made, not Yacht Club made, and they wanted to stick as close to the backer's interpretation of these characters as possible. Next, let's talk Amiibo, a feature obviously exclusive to the Nintendo Switch, Wii U, and 3DS versions of the game. The only Shovel Knight Amiibo that currently exists is of the titular Shovel Knight. In-game, it gives you the ability to play as Custom Knight, which levels up as you collect gems, and at each level up, you unlock some new ability. These include relics, some of which are exclusive to Custom Knight, which we'll talk about in a moment, charge attacks, special moves, different color palettes, costumes, special effects that follow Shovel Knight in various ways, and gestures that activate when you hold down on the D-pad. As for costumes, you get two. The Baron costume, which is pretty much just a bulky Shovel Knight, I guess. And objectively, the better one, the Fish Head. I mean, it, it, it's a fish. It's better. Now, for special effects, we get a Shadow Trail, which I find pretty distracting, actually, so I just prefer to just turn that one off. Then there's the Fire Wake, which simply leaves fire behind where you walk. The Shimmer Step does the same thing as the Fire Wake, but with sparkles. The next three effects follow Shovel Knight around, and will circle on treasure we haven't collected yet. These are the Fairy Friend, the Ghost Friend, and again, objectively the best, the Cute Bee. That, that's the actual name, and I love it. Uh, through gestures, you can make Shovel Knight whistle, laugh annoyingly, feign death, and finally, spit rainbows out of his mouth. Preferably, his fish mouth, because this is just ridiculous and hilarious. Now for the more interesting unlockables, the abilities. Charge attacks first. There's the Burrow Bomber, which lets you fly a short distance away once you charge it up, but I'm really bad with it and usually just end up dying because of it. There's the Flurry Razor, which sends flames out to the sides of Shovel Knight a short distance, which I honestly can't find much application for. The Blink Dash, which lets you dash through enemies, which can be kind of helpful sometimes. Coin Capture pulls in any treasure a short distance away from Shovel Knight. Essentially, it's the yellow eye core, but you can use it any time. Pretty helpful. Finally, the Bomb Burst from Plague of Shadows, which gives you a small burst of horizontal speed in the air, which can be really fun to mess with combined with other things. And also, essentially, lets you turn this into Plague of Shadows. Starting simple with the special abilities, the Shovel Blade Max simply gives you all the shovel upgrades available in the normal game. The Glide Cloud, letting you glide slowly down as you fall, which can of course be helpful to make longer jumps and save yourself before falling into a pit. The Double Jump, that's self-explanatory. The Diagonal Drop, which is super helpful and fun to use for speedrunning since it turns your shovel drop into one that sends you diagonally instead of just pointing straight down. Lastly, the Bounce Bomb, also taking straight from Plague of Shadows. Instead of swinging your shovel, you can now throw a small vial that explodes on contact with enemies or after a short time on solid ground. Alright, let's talk relics. You of course get your basic ones from Shovel Knight originally, but there are some unique ones to Custom Knight. The Flurio Rod creates a small explosion in front of Shovel Knight, which is fantastic for quickly dealing with enemies, especially those giant skeletons in the Lich Yard. The Throw Anchor sends Shovel Knight flying forward and up diagonally, which can be great for dealing with certain enemies, but especially to clear out large amount of blocks. The Ghost Glove is sort of like a ranged Dust Knuckles, rapidly shooting up fists a short distance in front of Shovel Knight that do not dig through blocks. It can be a good replacement for the Flare Rod in some situations. The boss star boomerang is a little bit difficult to explain, so I'm just going to show some footage of it. And honestly, it's just as hard to find application for it. It is a cool weapon, but somewhat unpractical. Shadow Knight, though, is awesome. It shoots a replica in front of Shovel Knight that doesn't have a hitbox. So, if you send it inside a large enemy and do a bunch of jump strikes, it can kill enemies really fast. I love using this thing. 
The Rising Dagger is like the Propeller Dagger, but it sends you upwards, helpful for skipping some sections of the stages. And the Infinite Dagger, which is like the Propeller Dagger, but it never stops. Until you hit something, that is. There's also two relics that are also in Plague Knight's campaign. The Bait Bomb, essentially a faster and better way to fish. And the Fleet Flask, which shoots Shovel Knight forward until he runs into something. Somewhat like a land version of the Infinite Dagger, but not quite. Now, when it came out, the Shovel Knight Amiibo was also the only way to play multiplayer in the game, on the Wii U version only. With Treasure Trove, however, local co-op is now possible on every version of the game, sans the 3DS and Vita versions. With the Treasure Trove update, you can also get a little Shovel Knight fairy to follow you around, not only a Shovel of Hope, but in Plague of Shadows and Spectre of Torment. Unfortunately, the Amiibo does nothing else in the last two, but there's some small functionality. Also, the Wii U version of the game, on my side, refused to update, so I couldn't personally get footage of this or experience it, so here's just some footage from Yacht Club. As for multiplayer, it's essentially exactly what you'd expect. Shovel Knight, but multiplayer. You can beat to collect more gems and kill more enemies than the other player, and you can generally be a dick to one another. It's pretty fun to mess around with. If you have the amiibo, you can also use Custom Knight in multiplayer, which essentially gives the one using it an advantage because they'll likely have more options in dealing with enemies. Now that I have the 3DS capture card, I can show you the 3DS version of the game. Not that there's much to show off, really, it's essentially the same exact game, but on the 3DS. There is one exclusive feature, though, the Street Pass Arena, which exists. You can record your movements in a small arena to send out to other players, and the goal is to either collect more gems than your opponents, or attack them. Unfortunately, I didn't know that before I recorded my movements initially, and you can only record new ones after going through all your street passes, so... I sucked. A lot. You don't get anything from street pass, and while some might find it a fun distraction, you're literally just watching the game play itself, really. It's alright, I suppose, but nothing special, and definitely not worth getting the 3DS version just for this feature. There's a sound test now. Go ahead and enjoy that, I guess. Even though the soundtrack is available for free on Bandcamp, but it's there, and it doesn't hurt anything, so whatever. Lastly, there's the Challenge Mode, which came out with the Plague of Shadows update. This is something I'll be covering in more detail at a later date, but it includes challenges for each of the playable characters, as well as Amiibo. The Amiibo includes 5 single player and 5 multiplayer challenges. However, those multiplayer challenges are not available in the 3DS version. These challenges provide you with specific relics and abilities, though it's disappointing that the majority of these challenges are just boss rematches. Again, I'll be covering these in more detail in a separate video. And I think that's about it. Again, a lot's happened since I finished Shovel Knight before, and some of this I definitely wanted to cover before I jumped into Plague of Shadows. Whenever I get around to doing that. But hey, if you own Shovel Knight, go and enjoy it for yourself. If you haven't played Plague of Shadows, go and do that now. It's fantastic. Inspector of Torment is now available on all platforms for you to enjoy, not just the Switch version, and I've heard that's really good as well. That's it for me though, so I'll see you guys for the Shovel Knight and Amiibo challenges, and eventually, Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows. See you guys then.